So in this video, we're going to be looking at x to the third power. So um, to kind of start us off here, um, I want us to look at these two warm-up problems. And notice how we're solving for x. So we have to get x by itself. But the x has a third power on it or a cube on it. So if the exponent is 3 or the power is 3, how do we remove it? Well, we have to first understand um, how do we move powers in general. So remember when we had x squared, and let's say this side here is 9. Well, we might remember that if you have a square, to get rid of a square, you use a square root, and that helps you cancel. But if you take a square root on this side, you have to take it on the other side. So when you take a square root, the x comes down now, and now the square root of 9 is 3. But we also learned that there's always a plus and minus sign, and it's just because when you square something, you can turn a negative into a positive number. Um, but in this case here, if you have a cube or x to the third power, you do the same thing. You have to take a root, but this time it's not a square root, it's a cube root. So I have to take the cube root of the other side as well. So the the 3 here and the 3 here, they actually cancel each other off. So this cancels. So that means my x comes down. But I also have to take the cube root of 2 16. And that's just asking what number multiplied 3 times gives me 2 16. And the answer is just play with your calculator for a moment um, and see what numbers multiplies 3 times to give you 2 16. And it ends up being 6. But I'll also show you how you can do this on a calculator so you're not guessing all day. So let me switch my camera on to the video. Give me one sec. Okay. So what you can do to get this in the calculator is you need to hit math. So you hit math first and you should get a bunch of option here. But you want the cube root option so you can see that is... Four, so you can use the arrow key or just press four. But I'm going to scroll down and then I'm just going to hit enter. And that's how I get the cube root. And then I can pop in to 16 and just type it in and hit enter again and I get six. But you can see up above I try to guess the answer by just plugging in numbers. And I just did six times six times six, three times and I got 216. So that's how you do it on the TI-84 calculator. But I'll also show you how you can do this on um, GeoGebra. So if you go to your home page and you scroll down, so if you're on the home page, you scroll down to the bottom and you'll get some calculator features. So click on GeoGebra. And this is a great website if you don't have a graphing calculator at home, but you have your MacBooks and you have internet. So um, what you do is you click on the F of X button first. And then you go, you're going to need to click on this button, the one with the root and then the squares. And so if you click on, oops, did I do it? Yeah, I did. So then it'll have a little dash and you're going to put three there to make it a cube root. Sorry, it's kind of tiny. And then click there to type in 216. So we're going to take the cube root of 216, hit enter, and you get six. So that is two ways you can use a calculator. You can use GeoGebra or a TI-84 um, calculator. All right, so let me shrink this down just a little bit and put that to the side. Um, I can also find the cube root of uh, 1,000. So again, I have to try to get x by itself. So I use a cube root to get rid of the exponent. So I have to take cube root the other side. So the threes cancel out, x finally comes down. This one here would be pretty easy to make a factor tree. So remember, um, when you make a factor tree, you write this to the side here, you just write out what multiplies, two numbers that multiply to give you um, 1,000. But remember, this is a cube root. So instead of looking for pairs, like with square roots, you're looking for triples. So in this case here, um, 100, times 10 gives you a thousand because you would add up the zeros and that's how you get a thousand. There are three zeros. Um, but we also know that 100 breaks down into 10 times 10. So because I already noticed a triple, there is a triple of tens. The cube root of 1000 is 10. So that one's the easy one to do a factor tree. 
So the cube root of 1000 is really 10. But I could have used the calculator and that would have been perfectly fine as well. So let's go to um, this part here. It says, can you solve a cube root using the calculator? And we just learned how to do that. Um, so with the TI-84 calculator, all you have to do is hit math and then hit option four. And then you should get a cube root that looks like this. So that's what it's talking about. So hopefully that gives you an idea to practice with your calculator. Try some more cube roots to get used to taking cube roots with your calculator. All right, so from here on out, let's talk about factoring when you have something to the third power. So we've learned how to factor things that are to the second power, but not to the third power. And one way I do this is using this formula here. Now it can be a lot seeing it the first time, but it actually has quite a few patterns you'll start to notice. First off, this, will, this type of formula only works when you have a binomial. Bi means two terms. So notice how there are two terms here, one and two, one and two. Either sometimes you have a plus sign or sometimes you have a minus sign. And these binomials are what we call perfect cube roots. If you have a perfect, um, let's put this to the side here. So if you have a perfect cube root that is a binomial binomial you can use these formulas here and perfect cube root just means that um, this number is like a number that has a whole number that's taken to the third power so like a perfect cube root would have been that 216 and 1000 because if you take the square root of that it gives you a whole number not decimal numbers so that's what i mean by perfect so let's get into how to use this formula. As you can see down below, you have two terms. All of these problems have two terms and you are asked to factor them. And to factor them, we need this formula. And you'll notice the first thing you need is to figure out is what is your A, what is your B, because this formula consistently uses an A and a B. The next thing you have to figure out is the signs. So if you have a plus sign, you'll notice that your first factor has a plus sign and then a negative sign and then a plus sign. Notice that if you start with a negative sign, you're gonna have a factor with a negative sign and then a plus sign and then a plus sign. Basically, you'll notice the last terms have a plus sign and it's the two, um, two signs that are flipped from each other. They're opposites of each other. So what I wanna mention is that when you factor, um, one way you can remember the, uh, the signs is to remember the acronym SOAP. And that sounds really weird, like we're trying to remember an acronym, but I'll explain what this acronym stands for. So SOAP, S stands for same. So what it's saying is, let's say you had a plus sign to begin with. Well, the first factor always has the same sign. So S stands for same. And this is an acronym that we use. It's a very common acronym too. Um, o stands for opposite. So no notice that the next sign here is the opposite sign from the first one. Same thing here, like this sign was negative, so it's same and then opposite. So this is opposite. A stands for always and then P stands for positive. So always positive. And what that's referring to is the third sign. Notice that the third sign in both of these is both positive. So they're always gonna be positive. Now everything else is the same. Like they both start out with an A and a B, A squared, A, B, and B squared. So that's usually easier for students to remember. I also wanna mention, um, once you have this part factored and you get this factor, it's really tempting to try to factor this because it has, you know, something that's squared and we would think that we could factor this trinomial, but you can't. So don't waste your time trying to factor the trinomial. It is not factorable. I just want to give you a fair warning so you don't spend your time trying to factor the trinomial. All right, let's get started here. So this only works when you have a perfect cube root um, and it's a binomial. So let's take a look at the first one that we have. So notice it has two terms. This one is x to the third power, and we have an eight here. 
Now, eight actually is a perfect key root, and you might guess what number multiplies three times that gives you eight, because we've done it before. Um, so, first off, you need to figure out what is your what is your a and what is your b. So, a is some number that is taken to the third power. In this case, it's your x. So let me write it out this way. So let's write it out this way with a cube. And we're figuring out what is a, what is b. Well, in this case, a has to be x because x is being taken to the third power. But we have to figure out what number here is being taken to the third power to give us 8. And we can always just go ahead and take the cube root of 8. So you could plug this in your calculator. But if we just think about it for a moment, it's going to be 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. And we've probably seen this pattern before. But if you take the cube root of this, this is also 2. All right, so we found A, we found B. That's the first thing you want to do. After that, let's actually solve out this problem. So following the formula here, you have the minus sign. So you're going to follow the bottom formula. So if you can use SOAP to remember the signs, but if we just follow this formula here, your A here goes next, so that's going to be your X minus your B, which is 2. But then your A comes in the next factor, but it's being squared, so this is X squared plus your A times your B. So if I take A and I multiply it by B, I get... 2x plus my b that's squared. So if I take b, which is 2, and I square it, I have to clean this up a little bit. So the middle term, or let me start with the first term here. So the first term is your a squared. So my a was x, so I squared that. My middle term is going to be a times b, so 2 times x gives me 2x. And so if I just clean this up, I'll bring down the first factor because I can't really do much. I'll bring down the x squared, the 2x, and this 2 squared is a 4. And so I really just have um, x minus 2 and then this factor here that I can no longer factor. And so this is my factors for the, the binomial here. All right, let's try another one. So this one has a plus sign between and it also has a number next to the x cubed, so that makes it a little bit more challenging. So first off, if you already noticed the pattern, um, if this is a plus sign, you can probably already guess how to fill in the signs. So if I were to use soap here, you would have um, same, opposite, always positive. So you can fill out your parentheses first, if that makes you kind of like warmed up. Um, then I have to figure out what goes here and here. So this is where A and B go. So I have to go figure out what is A, what is B. Let's go ahead and do that. So if I make my parentheses here, I know something has to be cubed. This is going to be A, this is going to be B. First off, A is going to be the cube root of this guy. Notice how the X is cubed, so I know X has to be in here. So that way I can get that X cube. But I also have to take the cube root of 64. So if I ask myself what number is um, multiplied three times to give me 64, or what's the cube root of 64? Turns out it's 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times another 4 is 64. So this is going to be 4x to the third power, and that's how I get 64. Um, you can also just redistribute. So 4 to the third power, 64, x to the third power is x cubed. Now, this one's tricky because it's just a 1. So if I were to take the cube root of 1, or just think about what number multiplied 3 times gives me 1, you probably think this is a trick question because it has to be 1. And it is. 1 to the third power is going to be 1 because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So in this case, my a here is 4x, my b is 1. So this a is going to be 4x, my b is 1. And then this is where a squared goes if we follow that formula. 
So if I take my A and I square it, I could just write it out first. I know some people like to write it out for X squared and then I'll work with it later. And then this is where A times B goes, A times B. So A times B is gonna be four X times one. And then last but not least, this is where B squared goes. So if I take B and I square it, that's just gonna be one squared. Now I could have definitely skipped some steps, but I'm gonna show you all the workout so that way we can kind of see it in slow motion. So this is still gonna be four X plus one. There's nothing I need to do. This factor, I need to distribute that too. So four squared is gonna give me 16. And then that X also gets a squared. 4x times 1 is just 4x, so I'll bring that down, and then 1 squared is just 1. And so there we have it. We have our factors for our cube um, equation. All right, so at this point here, now that we've kind of gotten to the rhythm of things, um, I'm going to go a little bit faster. So this one here, it has a plus sign, so I'm going to first start with soap, making my parentheses and my um, signs. So if this is a plus sign, same, opposite, always positive. Now from there, I need to figure out what is my A, what is my B. In that case, let's make our parentheses. This is gonna be a cube, and this is where gonna be my A and B. So if I were to think about what goes here for A, I know I have to have an X because this term has an X. Now I have to think about what's the cube root of 27. So what number multiplies three times to give me 27? Well, it's three, because three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. So it has to be three. So three to the third power is 27. All right, and then this one is another eight, so I know it has to be two, because we mentioned before two to the third power is eight. So my base has to be a two. All right, from here, my A is gonna be three X, my B is two. This is where A squared goes. So if I were to square, or I'll just write it out, three X and I have to square that. So this is my A and I'm squaring it here. This is where I'll multiply my A and B. So um, A times B, three X times two is six X. And my C, sorry, not C, my B squared that goes here is just gonna be two squared. So I have to figure out what two squared is. So then I could just clean it up. So it'd be three X plus two just comes down. This is gonna be the two that's gonna distribute in as an exponent. So that's gonna be three squared, which is nine X squared minus six X plus four. So if I square that two, I get four. And there we go. We have our factors. All right, one more here. This one is part D. So in part D, we have X to the third power minus 1,000. And so this feels a little bit similar to our bell work or our warm up problem. So first, let me start with the sign. So we have same, opposite, always positive because this is a negative, you're gonna have the same, and then opposite, always positive. All right, from there, we need to figure out what is your A and what is your B. So your A here has to be the X, because in this case, this is X to the third power. The cube root of 1,000, I think we took a cube root of 1,000 earlier, and we got 10, because 10 to the third power gives you 1,000. So I found my base for B. It's just 10. So my A here is X and my B here is 10. So then I would have A squared, which is X squared. Um, A times B for the middle term is just going to be 10X. We always like to write the 10 in front of the X. And then B squared is going to be 10 squared. So 10 squared is just going to give me about 100. So you can just write 100 here if you like to work it out. You can just go to the next line and rewrite it. And there we go, we have our factors. Okay, so make sure you show your work and you're telling me what is the base that you found. Um, and 
then write out what your factors have to be. All right, that is it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Bye, guys.